But let's have like a uh, kind of a primer on uh, epoxy and hydride uh, curing mechanisms. Yeah. The first question everybody has is, does the anhydride molecule react with the epoxide? And, and it no, doesn't. we don't see that, right? So those, those are inert. The anhydride and the epoxy are inert to each other. They don't react. But if you've got a standard epoxy chemist who is well-versed in amine chemistry, that's the first thing you're going to think of. And then your response is, uh, no. No. <laughs> it doesn't go that way. No. You need one of either the epoxy or the anhydride to open up to generate a hydroxy group which starts the whole curing and cross-linking process. So what would you g give a list of the things that are required to open up uh, the anhydride? An amine, for example, um, a metal salt can be used as a, as a curative. They, they're all going to react and, and create uh, a salt or an amic acid in the case of an amine and a free hydroxy, which then can turn attack the, uh, the, the uh, epoxide ring. Uh, imidazoles. Imidazoles are, again, are nucleophilic enough to attack. Right, and, and metal salts yeah. of all kinds, organometallic yeah. salts, yeah. So whether in intentionally added or present as some type of a contaminant. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I, the classic one is presence of water. We'll start a curing reaction prematurely because you're, you're creating free hydroxyls, either the water itself or through opening up the, the anhydride ring. And, and you could also have uh, some latency built into the accelerators too that uh, then uh, activate at a certain temperature right. to then propagate the reactions that uh, you just mentioned. Basically, if we look at these three reactions, one, two, and three, as the classically right. well-accepted uh, exactly. three major reactions yeah. in these kinds of systems, reaction one and two in that sequence are what create the cross-link yeah. between the epoxy, resin, and yeah. the anhydride uh, linkage. Um, and the reaction three is the homopolymerization sure. reaction of the epoxy resin, which Anand, you pointed out. And these reactions are all happening at the same time. And they're competing with each other. And then the right catalyst would um, would accelerate specific reactions preferentially, preferentially right. that, and we, we as uh, uh, formulators or uh, chemists can uh, steer the reactions to a certain direction. But how do you safeguard that in terms of, you know, how do you guard against, you know, uh, water contamination and maybe it's, maybe it's part of your, your resin spec or maybe one of your filler specs and has some water in it. What about the free acid content of your dianhydrides? You know, how do you safeguard? Any liquid drums of any raw materials, uh, they should be nitrogen blanketed or just dry air should be well, in the same, in same with the anhydride, sol any of the solid anhydrides too. You take the material out, you need to make sure you close everything back up, inert it, and reseal it. Or the next right. time you use it, you're going to have the, the, the water is going to react with the anhydride and, and create some free acid, which is then going to potentially start, uh, cause curing to occur at a lower temperature. Yeah, the key is to know what catalysts work within that particular formulation well and within that process well. So a process is just as important as formulation. So if a process will allow the system to be all mixed and ready to react and stay at room temperature for five hours before it'll ever see heat, well, there will be some things happening in right. that time. What's gonna happen in that time? And how fast? And, and then the other processes could be you mix everything together and within five minutes you're at the highest temperature, 160 right, degrees right, C. Right. No you will have a very different kind of a progression of the reaction system. And, and one thing we have to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, we talked about the esterification reaction, which is the result of reaction one and two, mm. and then the third reaction three here, which is a side reaction homopromization. Yes. Well, all catalysts will accelerate different reactions and temperature will accelerate all these different Understood. reactions Absolutely. at different yeah. times. So is the, is the, the whole, uh, like, let's remind ourselves of the chemistry, Arrhenius plots right. of all these reactions, they, they will go up in, uh, in their magnitude based on different temperatures. Certainly. And uh, the question is which catalyst enables you to spike the rate of the reaction you want Un to Under the conditions you want it to occur. Uh, yeah. And in that those case. things are well studied in by techniques such as thermal analyses, mm -hmm. which you can then bring to bear to, to quantitatively understand uh, temperatures and enthalpies, et cetera, and, and use such uh, tools to better formulate a system. I think a lot of formulators probably just use, you know, tried and true components. Yeah. Hey, this is in my kit, I use it all the time. But now we're talking about dialing in the system so that you can actually manage these three you reactions in terms of which way you want your you system to go. You absolutely have to, or, yeah. else, or else you're, you're, stuck with, you're stuck with what you get. I mean, you, you, you need to be able to control the system. Temperature, catalyst, curative, yeah. um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complex mixture. Right.